Okay, I'm gonna talk a little bit about Kosovo. All of the things I'm gonna be mentioning at first, they all play into the larger picture of what's going on here, and what's going on here is very relevant to what's going on in the rest of the world, in developed countries, in the United States, everywhere. Because Kosovo is a microcosm of a much larger plan. First of all, Kosovo is small. Kosovo is 20 times smaller than Uruguay. It's about 75% of the size of Connecticut. LA County is still 10%, 15% larger than Kosovo. Okay, so what's it like then? It's like the Big Island of Hawaii. There's 1.8 million people here. Yes, they are still recovering from the war. I'm just passing the Bill Clinton statue right now. You know, everywhere you look online, they talk about Kosovo being the newest country in Europe. And they say it as if it just popped up out of nowhere, as if there's no history or culture or nuances. It's just, hey, look at this new country that just suddenly exists in Europe. It's obviously the land's been here forever and the people have been here for a really long time. It's disputed as far as whose country or whose space this really is. So while it's not new, it didn't just pop up like a Walmart someplace. Uh, it's not squeaky clean. Um, it certainly is working out the bugs of its own existence. So Kosovo is currently trying to establish itself as a separate space from Serbia and half of the countries in the world recognize that half of them don't. I'm going to show you this map right here. One of the ways you can tell this map is biased is by looking at how ridiculous the size of Greenland is and them putting Greenland on the map as a, as a nation that supports Kosovo's independence. It is interesting how the countries have lined up uh, on Serbia's side versus Kosovo's side. And we will get into that later as far as possibly why that is the case. I'm using all 45 horsepower. Hang on a second. A lot of the things I'm going to be talking about are coming from citizens of Kosovo and from people who work here. I've been talking to a lot of people trying to find out exactly how this country operates and what's really going on here. And so I'm going to be sharing some of the information they shared. So first of all, everyone has told me that Kosovo has a corrupt government. And he did look into the details more, but I was even told by an architect here that when Kosovo started getting its independence, those who were managing the war on Kosovo's side, those who were running the war, started just taking people's apartments randomly and say, uh, well, we deserve them because we fought for, for the independence, so we're just going to take your stuff. We're going to take your apartment. Uh, everybody I've spoken to does not like the way that the government is being run. Why, why did the U.S. and NATO intervene in Kosovo when there were, there's wars all over the world all the time? and so-called genocides happening, and actual genocides happening, um, I bet you can guess that the answer is probably natural resources. Kosovo has natural resources. It has a lot of coal. I was, I've been told that the resources to build Serbia in the past came from Kosovo. That they have some silver, gold, I believe zinc. Uh, I'll give you a list here of the natural resources. So the U.S. and NATO have bases here, and we're probably never going to leave. We don't have a habit of leaving places that we come to protect or occupy. The other reason we probably won't leave is that Kosovo has 1.8 million people. Serbia has 7 million people. The chances of Kosovo being able to defend itself against Serbia anytime in the near future, I don't know what economy they'll be able to use to raise up an army, it would have to be a lot of borrowed money, and it would have to be a lot of selling of resources, but not just resources, probably rights to their resources, which is really why we're, why we're here in the first place. It seems that the economy is functioning on outside money, whether it's donations or banks or governments loaning them money so that they can build. But that money's not free. And the way that that money is being used is not, from what I can tell, helpful to the people of Kosovo. For example, I talked to a gentleman who's a consultant here for a chain of retail stores. And he was sent by a bank that loaned those retail stores money. So a bank in Europe, under the guise of helping promote the development of Kosovo, lends money to a retail chain. Then they send a consultant 
many consultants actually here, to make sure that that money is being spent well. Well, what's the end result? Number one, the end, end result is that it's the pushing out of other small businesses, other small retail stores. It's going to be unemployment, and because the goal is to run efficiently as possible, there's going to be less people working. It's going to be more automated, and it's going to be the monopolization of an industry. So what you have is the consolidation of wealth. You have the rich getting richer. You have the poor getting poorer. And you have money flowing out of the country in the form of interest on the debt that that company is going to pay. Wow, this is this is a little wild. Now, here's the other dirty little trick. If you've read a book called Confessions of an Economic Hitman, you'll know a little bit about how business is done in third world countries, uh, how investment comes into the country. You'll have a large international bank and they'll come here and they'll offer a loan to a company. And the company is happy to take a loan, the interest isn't so bad, and they just want every chance to get ahead in a developing market, so they say, okay, let's do it. That, that bank will send in appraisers and they will overvalue the company on purpose so that that company will borrow extra money thinking they are extra valuable and will make be making extra profits so they'll borrow extra money not realizing that the whole point of the loan is for them to default on that loan the bank gives them that loan so that they'll default and then the bank can own whatever collateral has been put up against that loan whether it's land or resources, these are the things that the banks end up collecting when these companies default. So this chain of retail stores I was telling you about, chances are it was not designed to succeed. The odds are much better that the point of the loan was to keep the collateral that was put up against the loan, which this retail company happens to have a lot of land. So now that European bank is going to suddenly own land and go slow. Here's a little bit about the education system that I learned from one of the students that I was talking to. Apparently it's about 25 euros or 30 US dollars to attend college for one semester. Obviously that's incredibly cheap. One of the problems is that they're experiencing what happens all over the world in some of these developing countries, which is called brain drain. So while these students can get really cheap educations, which is an investment by the taxpayers of the country into the country by educating people so that they can stay and develop business and become doctors and whatever else is needed in that country. Once the brightest have their educations, they're being recruited by foreign countries like Germany to come and work for them. So all that investment in those students is gone. Unless those students come back at some point to work country. Something else you realize here is that there are a ton of working age men sitting around in coffee shops all day. And when I asked about that, people said, oh, well, we've got pretty high unemployment. And I said, yeah, but where are all the women? And I was told, well, see, it's not that the men necessarily want to be in the coffee shops and the cafes. It's that they have to give their family the appearance that they're out doing something, trying to get a job, something outside the house. Whereas an unemployed young woman, it's acceptable for her to be at home, but the young men can't be at home, so they're out in the coffee shops, and the coffee shops are packed. It's kind of a scary thing to be in a country full of able-bodied young men who don't have anything to do. That is not a good idea for any country to have a situation like that because that is an easy opportunity for them to organize in some way for some cause that is counterproductive or antisocial. Here's the other thing that you have to watch out for here and that's the idea that 95% of the people are Muslim. You keep hearing that, oh well Kosovo is Muslim, it's all Muslim. Well yeah it is Muslim but these are not radical I've seen you know, they're very lax about their following of Islam. The reason that's so important is that 
if all of these factors become too much, if you've got the corruption, if you've got the pilfering of the country by these foreign banks and foreign governments, you've got foreign forces in here protecting the interests of those foreign banks and foreign governments and foreign corporations to make sure that they're extracting everything out of Kosovo. If people wake up and see what's going on and they decide to rise up and say, we're not going to have this anymore. We want our country back. We want to kick out these leaders that are corrupt and always have been. We don't want any foreign meddling. Well, now what you have is you have a situation where these olive-skinned, dark-haired young men who are Muslim are in the streets protesting. And so it's a great opportunity for the media to paint it as the radicalization of a country. It's easy for the media to paint that as a Muslim uprising, as a radical Muslim uprising, when really it's about economics, when really it's social. But if they can convince Americans and people in Europe that it's a Muslim thing that's going on, well, now we're willing to put some forces in because these horrible, horrible people are just going to suppress everybody else in the country. That's the message that's going to be sent to us, when really it's not about that at all. So, the cards are stacked against this country. In the capital, in Pristina, the people that I've met are not dumb people. These are smart, cultured, capable people who can determine their own fate if they choose to and if they can get organized well enough to make the decisions that are good for the country. I don't care if it's capitalist or socialist. I don't even think that has anything to do with whether or not this country can be successful. I think what's far more important is understanding how their relationship works with these international banks, corporations, and foreign governments. I think what's far more important than the type of government they choose and the type of economy they choose is understanding what's going on with their natural resources. Who owns them and are they up for collateral? Are their natural resources, is their land being used as collateral for a loan that the government has received, that companies inside Kosovo have received? How is all of this working and what can they expect in the future? I think the question that I'm trying to answer for myself is can Kosovo survive as an independent nation that is not having its strings pulled by multinational corporations, banks, and foreign governments. And Kosovo is fortunate to have passionate capable people. One of the things about Kosovo that is most appealing to me and that I think is one of the greatest strengths is that they have farmland and they have natural resources. If the goal of Kosovars is to become a European nation and to live like European nations, I think that they're making a big mistake. I think if their goal is to become self-sustaining, independent, grounded, I think they have the things they need to do that, but it's not easy to fight the multinationals and the foreign governments. And they may have already signed over a lot of those rights. They may have already put up as collateral the things that they need the most in order to survive. So I just hope that their best and brightest don't leave. I hope that they're truly as able to establish their independence. The only nations in the world that I'm aware of that truly have independence or are truly fighting for it are demonized and harassed constantly by outside forces who want to get their banks in, who want to get their bases in. It's not an easy path.